Ooh. Morning, all. Wow. Morning, Professor. I got lots of early morning people. Dear God. How you doing, guys? Good morning. Keith, how are you doing today? Man, if I told you I was doing great, I'd be lying. Why? What's going on? I'm exhausted. Don't bring me down, Keith. No, no, I'm doing great. I'm just starting, I'm just starting the morning. I like to have an upbeat. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Right, Taylor? Right, Taylor? Aren't you upbeat? Aren't you just raring to go over this morning? Yep, I'm ready. <laughs> I can tell that voice has enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm just happy I at work, so. <laughs> What's work, Larry? I'm a pharmacy technician, so it's been quite the last couple months. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're going to do to become a pharmacist? Yep, that's the goal, so. Working in a, in a uh, pharmacy, is, uh, working in a hospital as a composition pharmacist or just a regular store? Probably just like a regular store retail. Um, yeah. I like helping people that way, you know, able to talk to them and stuff like that and show them like what they're doing, so. Larry, what you have to be as a pharmacist is believe it or not, you have to be a teacher. If you like teaching people, because that's literally what your job is. Your job isn't counting your pills. Your job is to teach them how to make sure that, and to make sure that they're not taking uh, uh, or mixing your prescriptions too much. At yeah, time, no, I definitely. At one time I was going to do, I was going to be a pharmacist. Actually, that, when I came out of high school, that's what I thought I was going to do. Oh, wow. Mm. Long time ago, dear God. 50 years ago, oh my God. I just gave myself a headache, guys. Anybody have any issues with the with the uh, uh, lab that you just turned in? Today is kind of like your first normal day because you had to submit the pre-lab the night before the lab, and you had to submit the reports for last week's lab. Anybody have any issues with those? Did anybody have any issues with the uh, uh, lab book? I've been I've been answering questions as I as they come up in emails. Anything about that? I did just have one question on the results for the densities lab on the results part. I, Larry, I can't really, I'll, I'll answer the question, but it'll be after class when everybody leaves, okay? All right. Uh, I just, All right, I can't, sounds good. you understand, I can't give away the answers. Does that make sense, Larry? All yeah, right. of course, yeah. Uh, did anybody find it overly onerous? What do I do? Wait, 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 I gotta find my button. Where's my button? Reactions. Did everyone, anybody find it overly, overly onerous? I still get a great this crap. I think on it, Personal view. I think it's ridiculous for one credit hour to make you do this much work. I, I agree. Think, I think that we should be just making you do it one time so that you show me that you can demonstrate how to do a lab notebook. And then from there on, uh, you should be good. So guys, this is the promise I make to you. It's the same promise I made last semester. Show me how to do a lab notebook. And then what's gonna happen is when I'm going through to grade these things, I'm gonna scan them. It is still in your best interest to do a decent notebook because you get to use that on your final. Anybody have any, any real thoughts about what, the, what I just said? Uh, perfectly said. Gaith, I'm sorry, what? I said you're doing great. 
<laughs> yes. Remember, flattery will get you everywhere with me, but money will get you further. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, very easy lab. Okay, has anybody ever seen those little packets that you get in shoes? Come on, the little packets. Yeah. Do you know what those are for? For rats. For what, Gaith? You talking about those like little packets for rats or something? No, they're not for rats. They're for eating. It's not poison for rats. Don't eat them. Nobody Doesn't knows. It keep, Go ahead. Doesn't it keep water or moisture out of the package? Absolutely. What happens is there are, and I'm going to pull up my share screen now because it's my first important slide. Not this one. There are compounds called, called hydrates. What happens is they are salts that suck up water into the lattice structure of the salt itself. So you may have like a magnesium here, chloride here, chloride here, and you may have waters sucked all the way in there. They're part of the structure, but they're not part of the molecule. They're not really bonded to the salt. The salt is just kind of absorbed them out of, out of the air. That's, why, what, that's what they do when they are making these little packets. They take these salts, put them in a packet, and then they put them in an oven. That drives all the water away from the salt. But the salt wants the water. So they'll put these packets in your leather shoes and the idea is that there's any humidity around the shoes, that packet will absorb the water rather than your leather. That's the whole idea behind them. Now, when a salt has the water, it's called a hydrate. When the, when the crystals are heated and the water driven off, that is called an anhydrous salt. Now we're gonna be working with mass, how do I get this thing down? I have to click on it, don't I? To get the hand down. And now I can't find it. Ah. You guys are gonna have to live with the hand up the whole time because I can't find out how to get rid of the emoji. Did the slideshow go away, guys? No, we're still looking. No, All right, All right. I, my screen changed for some reason or other. So we're gonna be working with mass percents and specifically what we're gonna determine is the percentage of water within the salt. So mass percent is nothing more than you take the part, you divide it by the whole and you multiply by 100, okay? Because think, just think about this logically. If you divide the part by the whole you're basically saying how many is in one, correct? Isn't that what you're correct. doing? By the yeah. whole? So in effect, if you wanna find out how many are in a hundred, you have to multiply the part by the one, the fraction by the one is equal to, or I'm sorry, you have to multiply that by 100 over a hundred to find out how many parts are in a hundred. Does that make sense, guys? When you do that, you've done a percentage, parts in 100. If you were doing parts per million, same concept, only instead of multiplying by 100, you would be multiplying that part per one by 1 million over 1 million. Or if you're changing a percentage to that, you would be multiplying the percentage by, one over, or by 10,000 over 10,000. So the conversion, when you're finding a percent, you're doing part over whole times 100. When you're doing a million, it's part over whole times a million. A billion, same thing. So that's all we're doing for mass percent. Right now we are finding, we want the mass percent of the water in the particular compound. 
So we're going to take the part, divide it by the whole, and multiply it by 100. Guys, I keep on repeating myself because it is just that simple. That's all we're doing in this lab. So basically, our part, we want to find out the percentage of water. So we got to find out the grams of water. Uh, we want to find out the whole. That's going to be fairly easy because we're just going to be able to weigh the hydrate before we do anything to it. The other part of this, that's the experimental part. The other part of it is we are also able to find mass percents by looking at the molecular formula. We can take the atomic masses of the part we want to look at, add those all up, and then we can divide that by the entire uh, molecular mass of the entire molecule. That will also give us a mass percent. So we are going to take the mass of our experiment. We're going to get a percentage. We're going to compare that to the mass of our mass percent determined by molecular formulas. If they match, we've identified the hydrate. Fair enough? Shake your head, Taylor. I know you understand, Taylor. Good. All right. So experimentally, what we're going to do, we can't. We, the best way to do something in an experiment is going to be to take, if you want to get away, take the container that you're going to use to do the experiment and put your sample in it and then reweigh it and subtract the two. That way you don't know you don't lose any of the powder along the way. So we're going to weigh a crucible. A crucible is a porcelain container that is able to withstand high heats. That's why Arthur Miller named the play the crucible because there was high heat in that uh, uh, in that little Salem village when they were accused when the little girls were accusing the people of being witches. So crucible is going to be used to heat the stuff. You put the powder in and you, you weigh it. You've already weighed the crucible. You subtract the two. You've got the weight of the hydrate. Half your experiments done. Now what you're going to do is you're going to heat the crucible. You're going to heat the crucible and the hydrate in it. The idea is to drive the water away. Then what you're going to do is you're going to weigh it. Then after you weigh it, you're going to put, put it back on the Bunsen burner. You're going to heat it again, let it cool again, weigh it again. Then you're going to do it a third time. Riddle me this, Batman. Why are we reheating the crucible? Uh, Batman said to get accurate results. Okay. <laughs> very good answer, but very, very vague. Why does this ensure you're going to get good results? Just to make sure that everything uh, has been heated up. Like, there's no access amount of uh, liquid or whatnot, correct? What, what, Gaith? What was that last statement you made? No excess amount of liquid left. Gaith, sometimes you throw enough crap on the wall, something sticks. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're absolutely correct. She, she told you, man. I knew it. <laughs> what you were doing here is you keep on reheating it and checking the weights to make sure you have driven off all the water. I've got the last two results are fairly consistent. So I can, and the results between the first and the second, I've lost a tenth of a gram of weight. There might be some more water that's still in the crystals. So I'm going to heat it again. I'm going to keep on heating it until I get a consistent weight. Now, can somebody see an error here? What has just increased in the weather tremendously this week that make it very uncomfortable for us to walk outside in the Florida weather? Humidity. So what do you think that humidity is doing to this anhydrous salt? 
rehydrating it. Exactly. You've got to wait some time to rehydrate it. In that time, the Florida humidity allows water to act. Could this possibly be an error? Yes. Yes. Figure out how that's going to affect your results. Okay, so now we've heated it. We've got a consistent weight. Which of these weights are we going to use? The last. We're the final. We're going to use the final one. So we're going to take the final one in the crucible, subtract the crucible weight from it. We have the mass of our anhydrous. We have all the information we need. So we want the mass of the water. We have two choices to do this. We can take, we can take the mass of the hydrate, subtract the mass of the salt without water. That will give us the weight of the water, right guys? Jeremiah? That makes sense, Jeremiah? Yes. All right. The other way we can do it is we can take the mass of the crucible and hydrate and subtract the mass of the crucible and the anhydrous. In other words, take the mass before heating, subtract the mass after heating. If you notice, I'm getting the same weights. Either way will work. So I need to percent water. What am I gonna, I've got the weight of my water. What am I going to divide it by? Am I going to divide it by the mass of my anhydrous or am I going to divide it by the weight of my hydrate? Hydrate or anhydrous, guys? Oh, uh, the mass. Hydrate. Yeah. I'm going to do the hydrate because the hydrate is the mass including the water. We've just taken the water away to get the water weight. So we're going to take the mass of the water, divide it by the mass of the hydrate. I do that and I get 27.85%. Anybody confused? I knew you wouldn't be. This is simple crap. Okay, now, remember I said we had two ways. Two ways to get percentages. One is to do the experiment and determine what the percentage is from the experimental results. The other way is through the molecular formula. All right. If I want to determine whether my compound could be barium sulfate uh, pentahydrate, what I can do is I can determine the contribution water makes to this molecular weight and determine the entire contribution of the molecular mass. Divide the two, I will get the mass percent again. Guys, when I'm doing, when I'm doing molecular weights, if I'm doing something complicated, I like to have a nice formal pattern about it. What I do is I put the type of element, how many there are, and the atomic weight. And I multiply how many by the atomic weight. That gets me the contribution from that element. If I have oxygen, in this case, there are five times two, 10 hydrogens, or five times one, five oxygens. So I'm going to take the oxygen. There are five of them. Multiply it by 16. That is oxygen's contribution. Then you add all the contributions. It's a nice organized way to do molecular weights so that you don't get the wrong molecular weight. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for barium sulfate. I add that up, I get 233.39. I add the weight of my water to that. That gives me a molecular weight for a barium sulfate pentahydrate of 323. 0.47 grams. Simply speaking, I divide the weight of my water by the weight of the whole thing. 
I get 27.85%. Now I'm going to compare it. <clears throat> I'm going to compare it to the uh, weight that I got from the experiment, which was 27.85%. I've identified my compound as being barium sulfite pentahydrate. That's the experiment, guys. Any questions? Okay. All right. A couple, I want to do a couple side things here just for uh, your lecture purposes. You got to understand if you have the molecular formula, you can get the mass percent of anything within that molecular formula. All right. Say you know the mass percent and the formula of the salt. You can determine the formula of the hydrate. So if you know that the water is 27.85% of your salt, and you know that it is barium sulfate, okay? Barium sulfate makes up 72.15% of that compound. I could do it with the water too, but we're just using barium sulfate for the moment. So 72.15% of an unknown value is equal to the molecular weight of barium sulfate. I take the percentage away by dividing it by 100, and I got 0.7215x is equal to 233.39. My, my um, weight of my hydrate is 323.48. I then would go through and I would subtract the weight of the barium sulfate from the weight of the entire molecule. This gives me the weight of the water. I can then multiply that by one mole over 18.01. Can somebody suggest a simpler way to do that problem? So you're doing like, no, I can't. I'm sorry. Gaith, I'm sorry. I, I I lost my presence of mind. No, yeah, I can, you could do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can it, Gaith, say what you were going to say. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So yeah, just basically, because you, you mentioned the 72.15%. So then we're just dividing that by 100 to get the 0. 0.72, and then dividing again by the... Uh, Molar mass of BASO4. I just wanted okay. to. Yeah. But is there a simpler way to do this problem from do, going through BASO4? I'm not aware of that, sir. That's a little bit. Can you use the water? You can say 27.85% of X is equal to 18. Well, no, you can't. My bad, my bad, Larry, you can't do that because you don't know what the weight of the water is. You don't know how many hydrates there are, so you can't go through water. You have to go through this way. Sorry, I lost my presence of mind. It's eight in the morning, cut me a break. The other Funny. thing, the other thing is guys, if, if you're doing a stoichiometric problem, Say you are reacting. Uh, let's do this.
Okay. You need to make barium sulfate. You need to make this stuff. And you know that if you react barium chloride with sodium sulfate, you'll make barium sulfate. You go to the shelf. You do not see any pure anhydrous barium chloride. What you see is a barium chloride dihydrate. You want to make out exactly. You want exactly 20 grams of barium sulfate. How much do you need? All right, simple stoichiometric problem, right guys? Remember in stoichiometry, I need, I have a relationship, one mole, BACL2 makes one mole BASO4, right? So my question to you is, which molecular weight do I use? Do I use the molecular weight of BACL2 or do I use the molecular weight of BACL2 dot 2H2O? You use the molecular weight of the hydrated salt, and then you would add more accordingly. That is true and a fact. Because when you weigh it, you are not weighing barium chloride, an uh, anhydrous barium chloride. You're weighing the hydrate. And you have to understand that there's water in that weight. So when you are getting something, when you are going to grab the bottle and you see it's the hydrate, you cannot use the molecular weight of just the barium chloride. Because if I get, if I... If I heat this up, if I heat the barium chloride dihydrate up, I'm going to make one to one of barium chloride. So the moles are good there. The trouble is I'm starting out with the higher molecular weight. Does that kind of make sense to you guys? All right, before I go into the results and the other stuff, I'm going to take roll. Mervina. Here. Mer Thank you. Bethany. Here. Gaith. I'm right here. Natalie. Here. Kylie. Here. Aliyah. Here. Corey's here. Abhishek here. Andrew. Here. Alexis. Here. Kyle. Here. Marlene. Here. Christine. Here. Taylor's here. Monica. Here. Adrian. Here. Elaine. Here. Jeremiah. Here. Maria. Here. Jonathan. Here. Uh, Geddes. Here. The? Here. Larry's here, and I saw Paige. You still here, Paige? Yeah, I am. All right. 100%. Okay. Now let's go into the I'm going to get out of this. Uh, okay. Sheen screen scans. Blah, blah. Yeah. 
Okay, forest content. All right, again, you're gonna go down to student data for labs. And then you gotta take the soy thing back up again. And you're going to go down, it's going to be simple data table. Hydrated sample. You got two set, you got two trials. Okay. You have two trials of your sample. Keep that in mind. Okay, the results section. This should be fairly straightforward. If you don't know how to understand a calculation, please let me know. Either now or at 1120 next Wednesday night, next Tuesday night. Unknown sample. 454. That's your unknown sample. Elaine, don't write that down. Put anything in there, guys. All right, calculate the mass of the hydrate. Again, you got to put in the description. You can put the description in just like this and then do the numbers afterwards. That's fine. Uh, you got to do the same thing for the anhydrous. Then you got to calculate the mass. Three calculations, 25 points. Calculate the percentage of water. And you've got trials one and two. All you gotta do is trial one in here. All right, that's all you gotta do is show, show how you got trial one up to percentage of water. Then give me the average for one and two. Now, what you have to do, each one of these samples, you have to calculate the mass percent of the water within each of these five samples. Those five samples are going to agree with these five numbers. Then you are simply going to identify your unknown. Guys, understand, if you make this answer wrong, you screw this answer up. So that's 45 points, guys. So you want to be careful when you're doing these calculations. Uh, uh, professor, can we just get another example on how to do the mass percent, just to kind of visual perspective? Uh, Gaith, I'll do that. I'll do that later for you. Okay. I don't want to hold people up waiting. All right, Gaith. Okay. Any questions about the results? Okay. Exit preview. And now we're gonna look for the, post lab. And I'm gonna have to get out of here, blast it. I can do it in there, but I'd rather do it in the other place because it looks more like what you're gonna see. Okay, uh, let's start Chris. Okay, here's the number answer. Percent error, experimental minus known divided by known times 100. 
You find the mass percent of the water in the hydrate to be 29.84. The real answer is 29.98. Determine what the percent error is. By the way, the unit units should cancel out. There should be no units there. Okay. The units would be percents, right? Yeah, uh, well, no, the units are not percents because for percent, oh, my bad. Okay, it's a percent error, so the units are gonna be percents. My bad. When you multiply it by 100, it, the percent here cancels the percent there, but you're multiplying it by 100, 100% again, so the percents rule. Does that make sense, guys? If you didn't understand what I just said, hand up or just talk to me now. The units should be percent there. Okay, now, let me define the difference between precision and accuracy. The easiest way I can do this is with a with a example. Did I lose that? Oh crap. I got I gotta pull it back again in a second. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, if I want to talk about precision and accuracy, if I have my results, if I'm thinking that this whole square, this whole square is my, is my target and I'm shooting arrows at it and I shoot one arrow there One arrow there and one arrow there. I think you can't we can, see what you're doing. Uh, if you're doing something, thank you, you can't no, see no. It. Thank you, sorry. I need to be told these things. Sorry. All right. Can you see the screen now? All right. If I am doing, if I'm shooting arrows and I happen to be shooting in a rectangular square and I'm shooting at it. I think you can be fairly certain that I have been precise and accurate with my shooting. I'm getting them, I'm, I'm, precision means you're getting the right answer. Accuracy means you're getting the same answer. So by my shooting at this target, these are fairly close together. That means they are precise. And if my target is right here, then I am fairly accurate. Does that make sense? Okay, now, if I'm going to do another slide and I'm gonna do, uh, spelling is, Okay. That's my shooting. My target is where my cursor is. That is what I was aiming at. But I got my results way over there. So I am not getting the right answer. I am not accurate, but I am precise. So if I'm getting the same answers, but they don't happen to be correct answers, that means I am good at precision. I am not good at accuracy. If on the other hand, I 
I can be accurate, but not precise. I hate when it does that. I shoot three arrows. If I average these out, wouldn't I get somewhere right in here where I was aiming? So this is an example of being accurate, but I'm not getting the same answer each and every time. Obviously what you wanna aim for is accuracy and precision, but sometimes you are accurate and not precise, such as this example. That means your average gets close to the right answer, but you're not precise. Would you trust this person's results? Okay. Would you trust this person's results? Yes. You would trust this person's, if you had no way of knowing what the right answer is, yes, you probably would but it kind of gives you a false, false correct answer. Does that make sense to you? Right. Like, right. They'd be doing something wrong. Yeah. So you probably wouldn't be able to determine what the right answer is from this, but you would agree to use it. Ultimately, what you want is you want something that is precise and accurate. So again, I'm going to stop this screen. I'm going to try and get back to my. Okay. I have, these are my three results. How am I going to determine whether this is, oh, first of all, let's look at this. Are these results precise? Jonathan, you keep on shaking your head. Are you committed enough to that to put it verbally? I don't believe it's precise because the results are very, like it has a really large range. Exactly. You got a range in your percentages. So you are going to determine that this is not precise. Now, how will you determine if these results are accurate? You add them all up and then divide by three. And do what, Jonathan? That would give you the average. And then you would compare the average to the 25.67. Exactly. Exactly. So that is what you're going to have to do for problem two. Uh, okay. This is just, this is just the next couple problems are replicating the experiment. Gives you the weight of the crucible and hydrate and gives you the weight of the crucible lid and anhydrous. And it also gives you the, lid, the weight of the crucible. First question, you're being asked to determine the mass of the hydrate. Second question, you're gonna be asked to determine the mass of the anhydrous. Third question, you're gonna to have to tell me the mass of the water loss. Last question, what is the percentage? Okay. The last problem, you need to determine how many molecules of water there are there. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna use the experimental data to determine the mass percent of water in the compound. And you're going to use that one of those last formulas I gave you in the PowerPoint. Remember how I did that? I knew what the percentage of water was and I knew what the, what the molecular thing was. I was able to determine what the molecular weight was. All right, so if I have the molecular weight, if I have the molecular, okay. 
let's 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 do this step by step. Does everybody agree I can get the percentage of water here? I need to hear verbals, guys. Yes. Is there anybody that does not know how to get the percentage of water from this? Professor, just give me an example on this. I mean, I, see, I know somewhat how to break it down, but I just need to, like, I just need an example of this. So when I kind of look back at it, I kind of have a, you know, a breakdown of. Gaze, I, I promise you, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you adrift. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm not going to leave you adrift. All right. So, you can get the percentage of water. If you can get the percentage of water, can you get the percentage of the salt within that? If you know what the percentage of water is, do you know what the percentage of salt is? Yes. How do you get it? It would just be the opposite percentage of the water. Um, the whole thing is 100%. So if you subtract out the percentage of water, you are going to get the percentage of your salt. So you're going to take the percentage of your salt, and you are going to multiply that by the, by the weight of the water of the weight of the hydrate all right okay let's do this problem we're going to do this problem all right this is how this is what happens when mr popovich ad libs All right, we're going to go here and we're going to go back here. Gaith, you're going to get a example of this, all right? Sorry, I need to find that slide again. Say we don't know this. We're just going to call it M. All right. I'm sorry, I'm just, it's eight in the morning and I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Oh. When M is a metal. Sorry, I just got hit by this blind. You can sit and watch me waffle on this. I will send an email. Let me think about this for a second or two. Again, this, this comes under the heading of, um, this comes under the heading of being blindsided by a question and not, it'll take me just a second to just relax and do the problem. Uh, let me do that. I will send an email out with an example of this. Fair enough, ladies and gentlemen. 
Sorry about that. And I know that every time I do something like this, I lose confidence in you, but we will do that. We, I will get this out. All right. Okay. Any questions up to this problem? Are there any questions in what you have to do? All any right, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, in the lab book, when we're writing the chemical hazards, do we just write water or do you want us to no, write? No, don't write water. The only thing, the only, did you know that water does have an LD50, a lethal dose where 50% of the people die? It's called drowning. No, don't write water. Okay, then what do we write? Because there's not a lot of chemicals involved in this experiment. You have the five choices, don't you, Garris? Yeah, but I didn't. Okay, so we do write those because I didn't know since we didn't know for sure if they were involved or not. Yes, write them down because they're possibilities. Okay. Any other questions? Garris, I do need to see you after class. Um, somebody else I asked to speak to. I did want to speak to you after class about Sorry, something. Who was that? Larry. Okay, Larry. Larry. Okay, Larry. Um, anybody else? Uh, Again, ladies I and gentlemen, I will set up a problem like this and I will email it to you. Somebody else? Yes, I, I have a question. Yes, Elaine. Uh, but I'll ask you after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good enough. So I got Elaine, Garris, and Larry. Okay. Um, what you have to do for this lab you're going to have the results and the post lab due next Tuesday night at midnight. Okay. That's all I got for you guys. Okay. When I say that, you can leave. Bye bye. Bye have a day. bye. bye. Um, I I always Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good weekend. I, you have Thank a good weekend present. too. I always stay. I'm the last one in here. Okay. <laughs> okay, Monica. Did you have something you need to talk about? Oh no. I'm okay. just saying. Have a good weekend. <laughs> you have a good weekend too, Monica. Yeah, I'm just. Gonna, I'm gonna stay. Just maybe there's a question that I can hear or benefit from. Uh, Gate. I'm gonna kick you out because some of it is personal at one point okay oh, all right never mind so i'm going to stop share here gaith what you did what you requested was a you requested a did i lose that again no there's a powerpoint Okay, um, Gates, in order for me to do this, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to uh, um, solve something, okay? Yeah, that's fine. So you just, you're gonna email us, you said, or something like that? I'm gonna email you the problem, okay? okay. Yeah, that's good. I, but I gotta work it out, all right? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you so much. All right, Gates, I will, I will, Give me a call later today. I'm here. I'm here until 4:30. Okay, guys. Gates. Oh, uh, thank you, Professor. Yep, appreciate it. Okay, uh, okay. Elaine. What would you like to speak about? Um. So my question is, it's just about the notebook. Okay. I'm still a little confused. I mean, even though I turned it in. Um. But I was just. So basically all the information, you know, that we're putting in the, the notebook is in the lab manual and the dry lab, right? We use the dry lab data to answer the questions in the lab manual. You're doing it. You're answering the questions in the notebook as well as in the 
uh, online quizzes. You know the quizzes, Elaine, I just went through? Yes. The results and the post lab? That yes. absolute, that is priority. Okay. That's more priority than doing the notebook. Okay? okay. Yes. But you um, also are going to have to do the calculations. You got to write them down somewhere, Elaine. You might as well write them in the notebook. Okay. That's it. That's all. That's the only question you had. Yeah, I mean, I know I have to do the quiz, the result quiz, and the the post lab, and 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 that. But um, I know those are priority. But you know, I I haven't done a lab notebook in a long time, so I was just okay. I was confused on the information that we actually like putting in there. All right, Elaine, I'm not going to go through this. I'm going to show you where to get the information. I've already done this uh, uh, in the in the orientation class, okay? You're gonna go up, you're gonna get out of here. You're gonna go to the course content. Okay, Elaine? Then once you are in the course content on the left side, you are going to go all the way down to instructor notes. You're gonna click on it. Then in the instructor notes, this is the power presentation I gave on the first day. Below that is an example notebook. If need be, the if you go down to the to the power to the Zoom meetings. You will find that if you open the Zoom meetings, you're going to find that eventually when it loads up, eventually when it loads up, this is what's in the Zoom meetings. I got the orientation. I did gave the description. <coughs> description of the notebook on that day. You can click on that and uh, you, will, you will have my description on that day again. If after doing all that fails, Elaine, give me a phone call, okay? Okay, thank you. Larry, your question. So for the results for the densities and liquid, Okay. Solid um, results quiz. Um, yes. One of the questions I, I was not sure about um, when it was referring to. So it shows the um, mass of the, it's a question with the mass of the water, the volume of water, and the density of water question. Okay, hold on a second. I'm I'm trying to yeah, pull you're good. That, I'm trying to pull yeah. that. It is in the results, correct? Results, yes, for the densities. And that is due next uh, Sunday night, correct? Yes. Okay. Results for density. All right. All right. Um, did you, you did you turn it in, Larry, or not? I already turned it in. Yes. Okay. Do you mind my showing it in front that's of fine. Garris? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. We're going to. Uh, okay. I'm, 